get them all washed up, get the dry lock, get some lotion, get the pajamas on, back downstairs, have a little nighttime snack, they'll pick it, you know, cheese it, a little okay. wafer or something like that. And they'll sit on their little couches and they'll watch a cartoon until about seven o'clock and then between six thirty and seven we're giving them the medicine and any medicine they need at that point in time, if one of them has fever or okay. whatever else. And then brush your teeth upstairs, CC gets an overnight diaper, Bella doesn't. And read my book. CC usually wants a uh, tiger the tiger book. Mm -hmm. And I read that to her, we growl out the last part, mm -hmm. turn the rain machines on. Is, is that what you said? She's your tiger? Yes. Does that come to mind? Yes. Okay. And turn the rain machines on, give both kids good night. Cece wants me to put her to bed, Bella wants to put her to bed, and close the door, and night night. Can we talk a little bit about um, the morning that they disappeared? Mm -hmm. um, we already talked about 4 o'clock alarm, prepped until 4.15, correct me if I'm wrong, 4.15 this challenging talk starts, you leave somewhere around 5.30ish, 5.20 something, 5.27, yeah. um, and then what, what was your day like? So I went out to locations. Where's that? Uh, the oil locations. Oh, uh, locations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I worked out on those old locations until the 12:10. That's when I got the doorbell visitor notification. What do you do out there? What do you do at work? I'll yeah, operate the uh, oil and gas locations we have running. Oh, okay. Yeah, like either maintenance or just like inspections or like trying to get them running again type of thing. And are you the guy with the wrench or are you the boss? Um, I'm one of the field coordinators. Okay. So like our uh, the area we have is like really like it's really big. So like I have. Me and two other guys are field coordinators. Then we have two rovers, which they like, go around to the, the area and they help other operators. Then we have six route operators. Okay. So the field coordinators, we kind of, kind of get everybody like, all right, this is what we're going to do today, type okay. thing, and disperse, okay. type thing. So then, when you left at 5:30, which location did you go to? So the survey 319, which is the general well location. Is that a well location? Yeah, we have the survey 1029. Survey? Yeah, it's just well names. Servy? Yeah. Like S E R V Y? Yeah. Okay. And then there was uh, 1129, and we say the 1029 most of the day. And so these are numbers I don't even understand. I don't, there's like section number, well number type okay. things. That's how, they, that's how they name them. Okay. So then it might be that, God forbid, two weeks from now, we're still looking for them. And it's going to be very important that all of this can jar your memory, right? Yeah. So I'm taking notes to Servy what? So we have the 1129. Where do you go first? The 319. 319. Where and what crossroads would that be? Oh, no, it, it's out in a ranch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Survey 319. Okay. Yeah. How long were you at Survey 319? Probably about an hour. Okay. Just telling the boys what to do? I was out there checking a uh, line that we had leaking at on Friday. Okay. Okay, and that took about an hour? Yep. Then what? Went to the 1129. Okay. Again, is that just in the middle of a ranch? Yeah, it's the same ranch. Okay. Oh, so how far away? Not far. Walking distance? No. Oh, walking distance. <laughs> <That's laughs> ranch. Yeah, yeah, you don't drive there. Okay. How long were you at 1129? Probably about 20 minutes or so. Doing what? I was just checking, this, just doing an inspection over there. See if I can get the welder run again. Okay. This one you have to kind of run, man run manually. Okay. And then where? The 1029. We were there most of the rest of the day. Doing what? To replace, we're trying to get a pumping unit to pump back up and stuffing box rubbers uh, were leaking and the rods were smoking, so we had to replace them. That's what took a very long time. And how long were you out there? The other rest until 12, 10. So six, seven hours? Oh well, yeah, like, five, six, yeah. Okay. at least like five hours, it seemed like five, six And were there people with you? Oh yeah, there were people with me. Like, mm -hmm. there's, I gave them the names. Okay, there was, the police now? Yeah, Troy McCoy, Chad McNeil, Melissa Parrish, Cody Roberts, they were all out there with me. Okay. And you said you called home at 7.30 or so? I texted 7.40. Okay. And that was something like, a, where are you? Yeah, I couldn't go back that far on my phone to see when I called, but I did call her two or three times during that. And why then was that a better part of the day for you to text? Yeah, because like I was, at that point in time, like I was actually trying to call my foreman and everything else, like just to, like, just to talk to him, to tell him what I found. And it kept just like, it wouldn't ring out there. What you found, what do you mean? No, no. 
the line that we're yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, like we had a bypass line, mm -hmm. back pressure line that was tied to a down another down come on to an oil tank and it was leaking on the ground. Okay. But like I was not getting any phone calls through, so that's why I was texting. said that makes you not believe me at all. This just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't add up. So can we talk about two Chris's? Okay. Two Chris's. The tale of two Chris's? Okay. Um, and you need to help me know which Chris I'm looking at today and which Chris you really are. So Chris number one is right here. Right? And fell out of love with his wife. Okay. Started wondering what it might be. He didn't have a wife to take care of and a girl to take care of. Spent some time alone. Liked that time alone. Came home. May or may not have had a conversation about how to get out of this marriage or how to fix it, but probably how to get out of it. Is looking at a bachelor pad in Brighton and did something terrible to his wife and kids. And that may have been an accident. And I think it was an accident. That's not the Chris you're looking at right now. No. The Chris you're looking at is the man who loves these kids and loves his wife and will never, ever, ever do anything to harm them. That's the Chris you're looking at right now. The Chris you're looking at right now wants these kids and his wife back at his house right now. That's the Chris you're looking at. Why didn't you call 911? I didn't think anything was wrong. I think you knew what was wrong. I did not know what was wrong, sir. I 
promise you that. What do you think it's going to look like when someone finds out that it was not you that called 911? Everybody's going to have their own perception about what's going on here, but I know my wife. I know that sometimes she doesn't text me back. I know that happens. I've, I've, I've been there. It's happened multiple times throughout many days. If she's busy with work, it doesn't happen. That's why it didn't register for me that day. We're back to his tale of two Christmas Chris. Okay. There's a Chris who cares. Um, I care. I promise. Tell me about the call to your daycare. To the Primrose? I called them to see if the girls were there. He said they weren't there. Okay. I told them since they weren't there, just put them back on the waiting list. That's not what you told me. I told them that we were going to sell the house. Or we're going to put it on the market. We probably won't be in the area anymore. That's two different things, Chris. Well, I wanted them to be back on, on I put them on the, on the waiting list since they weren't there. Why weren't they there? I don't know. Where were they going to go? They went to a, Shanann took them to a friend's house. Why Who wouldn't they go to daycare? I am not sure. Uh, honestly, sir, I am not sure. It's hard for me as a father to talk to you about this. I oh, know. Not because it's a hard issue to talk about. It's because I'm worried about your daughters under your care. You shouldn't have to worry about them under my care. Okay. I watched them all weekend. I went to went to a pool party. Went to a pool party at Jeremy Lindstrom's house. It's like I love those kids with all my heart. And nothing in this world would ever make me do anything to these kids or my wife. When you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to convince them that you have nothing to do with this. I know. You know what they think. I, I know what all that all that yeah. Here's a guy who didn't call 911, who woke his wife, wife up at a ridiculous hour because he was so guilty about something that he had to get it off his chest and say, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you. That didn't go well. Okay, so what happened? She told me she wanted me to wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this, like I woke her up. That's what she wanted to do, and we talked. Like usually at 4 a.m., I wake up, I go down and work out. This day, I wanted to talk to her about this. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here, Celeste and Bella, those are my life. I helped make those kids. There's nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Nothing. Kids, that's, that's your life. That's your lifeline. That's everything. Like You make kids, they come first before anything. Kids, Spouse, family. That's what it's always been. Nothing you've told me tonight makes sense. Nothing you've told me tonight feels like the truth. Can we start over? Sure. physical. 
it was a it was a conversation. There was there's no we didn't raise our voice, nothing. I promised you that, so there was there was nothing physical with this conversation. What was the last thing? What was the last thing you saw about your daughters? Last thing I saw, like when I left, what did it look like? Saw them in the monitor as it was switching back and forth. What's the last thing you saw with your wife? She was laying back in bed as I was walking out the door, walking out the bedroom door. Okay. took him. What do you think we should do? Honestly, like, they're going to come home safe, correct? When you find the guy. When we find the guy, they're going to come home. Life in prison would be the, that's what I would, that's what I would think with two kids that are involved. What if he hurt them? Did they pop? Did, did I'm not sure if like that penalty is even used. Is it used in Colorado? I'm not even sure what is the death penalty. Okay. Um, I mean, like, if these kids are not alive, like, there's no, there's nothing you could do to to cope with that, to make me cope with that, if those kids are not okay.
I want you to know that I wanted to be in this room tonight. I wanted to talk to you. Okay. Okay. And I hope that you want to talk to me. Okay. When you have questions, when you have concerns, I want you to call uh, the detective that you work with, and I want you to call me. Okay. I want you to know that if you have a question, if you think we're not doing something enough or well enough, I want you to say, I gotta call Graham. I gotta call Dave. Okay. Okay. When you need to have a night to yell at somebody and maybe have a good cry, I want you to call me. Okay. Okay. I can't imagine what you're going through. I just can't. I realize today has been the whirlwind from like Yesterday I thought she was just at somebody's house, and today with the drones, the police, and the news, I, I, I look like a scene out of a, a, a scene out of a movie. That that's too much. It's too much for one person to handle. My dad's flying in tomorrow. Good. Okay. Check your dad who else yet? Uh, Nick and Amanda, Dave, Jeremy. Okay. Yeah, you only know me for three hours, but I want to be part of that team. Okay. Okay? I want to be part of the team that helps you, and I want you to be part of my team. Okay. Okay? Tonight, when you go home, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to pass out because you're so tired. Okay? And that's probably not going to be what happens. Your head's going to go race. Okay? So tonight, when you lay down and your head starts racing, there's going to be things that come to your mind. Okay? This always happens. Always. It's very natural. You're going to say, I wonder why he asked me that. Okay? You're going to say, screw him. How dare he accuse me? Okay? You're going to say, I wonder if they thought of this. Okay? And then you're going to say, I probably should have told him something or this or that. Okay? Those are the most common things. Um, when those thoughts come to your head, I want you to call me. I want you to call Dave. Okay? Um, it's fair for your mind to race. I want you to call me. Okay. You need a lifeline. You need someone you can call. I want to be that guy. All right. Um, and I want you to know that if I didn't accuse you a little bit, you'd probably wonder if I was good at my job. Uh, one right. of my one of my buddies, he he is straight with me. He was like, dude, I'll just be a uh, no veil like. None of this looks good. So it's like he's like I'm not gonna accuse anybody, but like I'm not gonna be like he has his wife and their friends. It's like they won't talk to you right now. Yeah. I'm like oh, I don't know. So we had this Chris right? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the other Chris. He's just right here. Okay. I can see that you're a good man, right? You don't have beautiful daughters with good clothing that look well fed, right? Children that are unhappy don't smile like this. Okay? And those are beautiful kids. Those kids have a good dad. And I know it. Let's just get a picture of someone's phone. Yeah. It's a better one. But it's just. I'm sorry, too. But it's those kids have a good dad. Good dad that feeds them and loves them. I was very impressed when I asked you how their day was about how involved you are. Okay. I see you on the weekend. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night. You know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's woman for it, right? Uh, I like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy. Okay. So, Chris, can you just look at me for one second? If there is something that happened, it's okay. It really is. Yeah. Okay. If something that happened with these girls, if there was an accident, if there is something you're afraid to tell me, it's okay. Yeah. If there's something that happened with your wife, it's okay. Okay. You can always tell me. And if you want to talk 15 minutes after you leave, I'll answer the phone. If you want to talk in the middle of the morning, I'll answer the phone. Okay. What I want to happen is, if that's what happened, if there was something that got out of hand, if there's something you know, I want you to go home and I want you to know that I'm the guy you can talk to, okay, who's not going to judge you. I have kids. Mm -hmm. So 
sometimes I sometimes I joke with my wife, I just need two weeks alone. You know? Like when you told me about your four to five weeks alone, I was like, wow, that sounds like a slice of heaven, right? Sometimes it's a bit much. Okay. So let's do this. I mean, we're gonna take a little break. Um, I'm going to help organize the search at your house tonight. Okay. Okay. I still want to do that. Okay. I was just gonna go to my friend's house and okay. stay away. Okay. Now hopefully they need no still wait. I can't tell you that we have to do it. Okay. I don't I if you want I if like you said, we have it rained tonight. Yeah. Like hard. Like it blew four trash cans in my yard. Let's get on it, right? Like it's whatever's there is there and I want it found. I wanna do that. I wanna to talk to you again tomorrow. Okay. okay. I want you to get a good night's sleep and a good breakfast and a good workout, whatever you gotta do, whatever your morning routine is. My dad flies in in the morning about like eight or nine. Okay. So what time should we plan on doing that? Can I get him back home first and then come here? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. And listen, uh, of course. Okay. Take your time, get settled in. So what time do you fly in? He should be here around eight or nine. You're nine? Yeah. Okay. He's from flying to North Carolina. Here's what I would love to have happen. He's flying in eight or nine. You gotta go get him. You gotta get him back. Uh, he's gonna wanna know everything. Yeah. Okay, he's your oh, dad. Yeah. Okay. He's called me like 10 times today. It's gonna take forever. And he's gonna have questions and comments and concerns, okay? Um, I would love for you and me as a team to, to talk tomorrow, to do a polygraph tomorrow, and move past all of it. Okay, move past me wondering about Chris. Me about wondering which Chris I'm talking to. I want to move past it. I just want to get it behind us. Okay, and then our talks are going to be a lot more comfortable than they were tonight. So can we say that tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Sure. We can do a polygraph? Here. Here. Okay, uh, and there might be little tweaks. It might be at a different office out of this. We're not going to okay. try to rock your world too much. We know what you're going through. Okay. okay. I want to get that done. I want to just move past it. Okay. Okay. Could we do that? Yeah. Eleven o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? No, like I have your have your phone number. Yeah. So that like if this flight doesn't get delayed, I can call yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. You have dates, right? Yes. So you base that up here? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. You know that's a 24 hour number, okay? Okay. Let's make that happen tomorrow. Okay. okay. One of the one of the things that makes us wonder about which Chris you can is when you don't answer the phone. Okay? So if I call you, I get it. You're on the phone, you're with your dad, you're in the drive through, you know, whatever it is, I get it. Okay. Um, if you go a whole day without calling me back. Oh no, that's not okay. Happen. Can we promise each other we'll answer the phone? Yeah, like I'm not going a day like if if I'm with if I'm with my dad or like I have other calls coming in, like I'm okay. getting back to you. Okay. There's no yeah. Okay. Your dad's coming tomorrow. Were you guys planning on staying here? Oh yeah, like he's gonna stay at my house. Like okay. that that was the thing. Like I don't want to be in that house by myself. Okay. That's why I'm staying with my friends tonight. Okay. Because I can't be right. in that house again. Like, have you already packed for your friends tonight? I got it in my car. Okay. I was I, I was actually about almost there when I was calling you. I was like, okay. yeah, I'll turn around. Uh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. I was like, I'd rather. Get this rolling right here. Sorry. All right. Um, I hope you realize I'm someone that you can call and trust. Mm -hmm. And again, I put the screws to you, but that's because I need to. I know. Okay. You did a really good job tonight. Okay. okay. Um, do you have any other questions for me? No. Just okay. We gotta find these two. And my wife. I'll show you the other picture on my phone. Okay. Let me go see. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go see where they are with the phone. Okay. And then we're gonna. Um, if you're gonna go to your friend's house, then we might not include you very much at the house, at your house. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to leave you alone for the night, but if we get somewhere, um, if we can't get in the house, if we find something we gotta talk to you about tonight, I'll and have I can't, my, I'll have and I can't wait, yeah, I'll have I'm gonna you again. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? Just gotta find them. No. Okay. I know. I know. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, give me a few coffee. I'm down to get rid of that. Yeah.
Okay. Thanks for letting us use your phone. No problem. Um, so we're trying to figure this out um, without sending you home with a bunch of questions, right? Gotcha. Which we'd like to be able to tell you this is our plan for tomorrow. So so far it looks like um, some of the things we need to do at your house are better at night and some are better in the morning. Right. So we're we're gonna probably split the difference and start very early in the morning. Um, now between now and very early is probably about three, four hours, right? Okay. Um, is it possible for you to not go home during that time to your house? Okay. Can you go straight to your friends? I'm gonna show my friends right here. Okay. And then when you go straight to your friend's house, um, is it okay to ask that you don't go back to your house? You just call me and give me a word. Okay. All safe. right. Okay. So we'd like to be able to. I don't want to do two searches at your house, because that will say to the public, "Oh boy, FBI is really interested in him," and then that's going to be a storm coming at you that we don't want. Okay. So we'll do that. We're going to send you home. Go to your friend's house. Get a good night's sleep. Um, pick up your dad at eight or nine. Yeah. Just okay. to verify with you. He's at like five. Eastern time? He already has a ticket? Yeah. Do you know what, when he's flying in, like what he's flying in on, or the company, or? I told him to go to United Airlines, it was cheaper, but I'm not okay. sure, because the kept, price kept changing on him. He bought his ticket? Yeah. Okay, what's his name? Ronnie Watts. Ronnie Watts, okay. Um, so, we'll send you to your friend's house. You know, again, I can't tell you, you cannot go in your house, but I'd like you to not go in your house, um, if you can do that. And then, we'll start early in the morning, I'll check in with you at around 8 or 9. Okay. Um, you'll probably be on your way to the airport if not already there. And then, can you, after that, can you just come straight here? Yeah. Let's let's talk, let's get everything out of the way, let's get done with your search, and then we're just going to, you know, send you on your way, and we'll be back to this Chris, the good Chris, right? Okay. Um, I'm sorry you have to go through all this. It's part of the process. Okay. So you guys can stay in my house overnight, or? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, and, but actually, yes. <laughs> okay. They w there will be someone at your house. Okay. Uh, there will be a patrol officer in the front and in the back. Um, and then, yeah, they're going to make sure. Well, and the reason is we don't want anyone else going to your house either. Okay. Some nosy reporters, some nosy neighbors. Some the reporters will be there because they they're just, they're just cycling in doing some yeah. Yeah. spots here. Right. There. Yeah. So, but we also want to make sure that they're not sticking a camera in your window and you know doing some sort of weird piece about your house and your home and so yeah there will be we'll make sure that no one else gets in there um, and yeah I mean they always there will be someone in the front and the back so so